It's always the same excitement when you start seeing these glowing streaks across the night sky. I had been waiting for them all year on the shores of the Baltic and Denmark, when they suddenly appeared in a beautiful manner on a warm May night. Then nothing. Three weeks passed and every night a disappointment. It was said that the mesosphere was too warm for them to form just by a few degrees. Around mid-June, they finally started showing up again, but in a rather shy fashion. It was a mere veil peppered with recognizable billows here and there, but something was hindering them from fully developing like I had seen many times before. Noctilus and clouds are the highest clouds on Earth. They appear at an altitude of about 83 kilometers in the mesosphere. Because the mesosphere is colder in the northern hemisphere summer, dust particles believed to come from meteors agglutinate with rare moisture and start crystallizing. These tiny ice particles would not be visible if the sun wasn't between 6 and 18 degrees below the horizon, reflecting its light onto them, making them glow in the dark. June 24th. As I arrive in the remote town of High Level in Alberta, Canada for the launch of our Airborne Noctilus and Cloud campaign with the Project Possum, I am greeted by a rare combination of celestial events. Noctilus and clouds can only be seen at latitudes between roughly 45 and 60 degrees north, right where the aurora borealis are visible. That night, the lights photobombed the clouds and wiggled on top of them. Surely a sight to behold. So tonight we're going to be testing uh, for the first run in airborne conditions, uh, the imager systems uh, built for these Noctilucent and Cloud missions will ultimately be flown on a balloon later in Antarctica. Uh, but uh, tonight we're going to fly to flight level 180, which is 18,000 feet, and uh, we're going to head due east and we're going to ride one line of latitude that should give us really good uh, scattering geometry on these clouds should they show up. So we don't know if they're going to show up, we just can try to be in the right position at the right time so if they do show, uh, we'll be able to get good imagery that's going to be coordinated with an imager from right here at our, what we call the possum den here at the uh, high level. After another aurora borealis exploded behind the ghostly veil at the start of July, flying and observing conditions had been worsened by the relentless bad weather. One night, we even caught a thunderstorm beneath some slow-moving noctules and cloud bands, reminding us how different and distant from one another these clouds are. Then, finally, what we had been waiting for all season long was eventually displaying in front of us at our ground station, in spite of the pessimistic weather forecast. As we rushed to set up all our gear and cameras, the brightest noctilus and clouds of the season illuminated the whole landscape. Huge gravity waves and bright billows were floating against the dark blue twilight, revealing every now and then the famous Kelvin Helmholtz disturbance structures exactly like an ocean of ice in the night sky. That night and the following nights, we successfully brought back monochromatic imagery of NLCs to be assembled later on to build a 3D model of the clouds, called tomography. As much as we demonstrated a solid and novel method of data collection for NLC research, the tomography will enable us to better understand the structure of these fascinating clouds, how they evolve, and perhaps enlighten us as to whether or not they can be visual indicators of our ongoing climate changes. A few other displays appeared during my road trip through the Canadian wilderness, including this one caught in Yellowknife when it was still very early in the season. 
On my way home, a look outside the plexiglass window of the commercial airplane enabled me to record this outstanding noctilucent cloud show over Greenland. Noctilucent clouds are mysterious because of their height and elusive nature, but they remain an important subject to study because they are our only way to visualize what is really going on in our upper atmosphere. <laughs>